Hi everybody, it's Mike from Here the Watchman, and wow, I've got my Hawaiian shirt on today. It's 30 degrees up here in the mountains where I live, but I'm getting ready because on Monday we're heading out to Here the Watchman, Orange County. It's in Irvine, California, immediately across the street from John Wayne Airport. You want to get to John Wayne Airport? Well, it's still named John Wayne Airport because the liberals want to change the name to something else because they didn't like the fact that John Wayne fought the Indians. So what can I say? But uh, we're getting ready. Uh, the conference, Disclosure on the Coast, Prophecy Unveiled, kicks off on Thursday. Uh, the real main events begin on Friday. Uh, so you want to get out there and be a part of it. Uh, we've got a lot of great speakers. Pastor Paul Begley, Michael Boldea, L.A. Marzulli, uh, Paul McGuire, Josh Peck, Gon Shimura, uh, Carl Tycrib. Uh, gosh, the list just goes on and on. Phil Kaur, uh It's just a, a Stephen Bancars. It's amazing. And I'm introducing to you today a new speaker to our, our uh, conference series, uh, a woman that we met at one of our Hear the Watchmen's and who's become a dear friend of Hear the Watchmen. It's None other than Sheila Glidden. Sheila, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. It's just a joy to be with you. <laughs> well, Sheila, you know you're you uh, you're the newbie to the uh, conference. There are a couple other people there that have never been to our conference, so you won't be alone. But you are coming, and you are going to be speaking on Friday evening, and you're going to be talking about something that is so prevalent today. And that is spiritual warfare. And you're going to be talking about harnessing God's power against the enemy. And you know, Sheila, we see the enemy creeping in in so many ways today. We get attacked at Hear the Watchman constantly. Uh, there's always something. If it's not a technical issue, then, hey, it's, it's something, you know, going on between people and things like that. Because the, the devil always wants to knock over the apple cart. What, what do you think is going on today? Oh, I think that our time is coming close to our return of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And just as we've been warned throughout the whole Bible that the power of the devil was going to increase the, the world system that the devil is in charge of is getting stronger and stronger. There are parallel, it's like a railroad track headed toward Armageddon. What God's doing and what Satan's doing. And we have, it's our battle to lose, Mike. It's our battle to lose because Jesus has already won it for us. Were but you, we have to go in and take the land. Yeah, amen. And you know, you know, Sheila, um, it's, I find it fascinating when you look at the events that are unfolding around the world. You look at uh, the attacks on President Trump. You look at what's going on in, uh, let's just say, London, what's happening in London and Great Britain, what's going on there, the attacks, constant. We see fires, we see floods, we see earthquakes, we see volcanoes. Uh, and we, we watch all this happen in sometimes you have to sit back and think to yourself, like, what is, is everything speeding up all of a sudden? Do you, I mean, do you feel like things are speeding up? Oh, they, they certainly are. And what you just ticked off list on your list uh, sounds like you were reading Matthew 24, <laughs> you know. So, you know, we are told that we can discern what's happening in the skies and we're being called to discern, to discern the signs of the times. And Jesus admonished the people that you better see what the signs of the times are. And there's a remnant. And my heart is to rescue those just as yours are. And, and as I've been going to your conferences for the last, oh, three years, I think, my mission has been to rescue every person that I could while I was there. And I have lots of testimonies of the women that I've ministered to and the men and the miraculous things that God has done. And 
my background has just given me um, the credentials to be able to speak into people's lives and really see miracles, people set free, physical healings. And I'm so excited because I really feel like God wants to do what I do one on one on one to a larger group of people because it's not hard to get set free. But there are some things that God's calling us to. And the church is just not ready for a lot of it. And so that's what my heart is, is to bring that to the table for you at this conference. Well, we're really looking forward to it. Now, Sheila, how did you, how did this journey for you begin? Have you, have you been battling uh, the demonic like this since you were a little girl? Or did, did, what, what has happened? How did you go on the start down this path? Oh, boy, Mike. Um, it started when I was about 28 years old, and I listened to this man named uh, Bob Larson on the radio, and he was a deliverance minister. And it was just shocking because people would call into his show, and there was one phone call that he had that a person manifested, and it was just frightening because their voice would change, and um, he would take authority over the demonic, but I learned a lot from that, and as I was praying um, for a man in my church that I felt, ooh, this, the poor man had so many things wrong, um, I felt like God tell me that he had a demon, so at a Bible study, I told the pastor, and he said, well, let's pray over him, <laughs> so we gathered around this man, and I said to the pastor, tell him to tell you what his name is. So he said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to tell me your name. And and this guy said, Sam Johnson. Well, everyone started laughing except for me. And I said, do it again. And and so the pastor, he says, I, with authority this time, there was a difference in his voice. He said, I command you in Jesus' name, you tell me your name. And this voice came out of this man who was schizophrenic and no understanding of the Bible. This voice came out, LMS. And everyone started laughing again. And I said, that's it. And we cast this thing out. And it came out just like it did in the Bible days. It came screaming out. So when I got home that night, I was so excited. I just opened my Bible and it fell to I Acts, I think, 13. And it talked about Illamis the magician. And so it started this thing at church oh there was so much controversy but there were some other circumstances that happened and we it birthed the deliverance ministry and I was an integral part they wouldn't do one without me there because I had the gift of discerning of spirits and so it was just pretty amazing for a couple of years we were seeing people delivered one guy had done time in Leavenworth for murder and I learned my lessons, and it was all stemming from disciplining myself in the Word and understanding my authority. And so as the years went on, I got credentialed to be a therapist, and I worked as a pastoral counselor and a clinical therapist in community mental health. And so all my years, it's been over 40 years now that I've been doing this, (laughs) And God, he comes through every time. It is just amazing. Women that I've had who have been in therapy for 25 or 30 years, when we introduce the spiritual peace, they start getting freedom. And I've had so many stories to tell. I I could keep you here all night telling you them. And they're increasing. They're increasing the number of them and just how fast they're coming. It's uh, And so that does tell me time is speeding up and God is wanting to get his people prepared. And there are so many, uh, just from your conferences, seeing them lined up for hours to be ministered to. We need to get these people set free so that they can get on the course of what God's called them to. And I appreciate you and Jeannie. You guys are right on the front line every time you have a conference. So I I do keep you guys in prayer, and I hold you up, and I do spiritual warfare with my little old ladies that I pray with every week. (laughs) Well, God bless you and your little old ladies. You know, (laughs) little old ladies out there, God bless you. Thank you for your prayers. We need them. 
you know. Now, so when 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 you come to the conference and and you're like I said, you're going to be speaking on Friday night. Are you going to do like a altar call, and then are you going to you know do some work with people individually afterwards? Yeah, um, Jeannie had suggested that she'd like to have an altar call. I, I feel like God is going to move in a really powerful way, and He has been kind of just given me instruction. Um, I believe that even during my my message that there will be things that come up in people. And he said, you right then and there, take authority over it, break it off of them. Um, and then we will do an altar call. And, I, you know, sometimes I've sat with someone for a half hour, an hour, even up to two hours ministering to them. So we'll we'll have to see how we can figure out how to do that. But I'd like to see as many people set free and healed as possible. So Jeannie and I will work out the details. I'm sure you will. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, now, so uh, you came to a Hear the Watchman conference. What, what, what led you to come to the first Hear the Watchman conference that you came to? I heard, um, I heard it mentioned on a radio, on a internet radio program, on the Hack program, and. Um, you were going to Dallas. That was the first one that I went to. And my heart just felt, I, I need to get there. I have to get there. And I made arrangements to go. And I even volunteered to help out at registration so that I could collect some women. Uh, <laughs> And I met several women that, there's so many women that come to these things by themselves. So I made some friends that I'm still in touch with today, and we prayed with each other, and we saw mir miracles happen. Uh, one lady from Ecuador, after the whole conference was over, we're in the lobby waiting for the uh, shuttle to take us to the airport. And this one lady was traveling out of the country, and there was a problem with her passport, and she had to go to the embassy. And she was kind of frantic, and we just prayed with her and prayed that God would take away all the obstacles, that she would just go through the embassy, that the right people would be there. And uh, she found me at the next year in Dallas, and she said, I've been looking for you. I wanted to tell you that just exactly how you prayed for me was how it happened. I made my flight, and she was back. So God just, he uses these conferences to really help the remnant um, connect with one another. And that was what drew me to it in the first place was somebody is finally speaking out we're in the end times no not enough people are talking about this so that's what brought me there and that what that's what keeps me coming back mike well you know it's interesting you bring up a a, a very valid point is that not a lot of people are willing to talk about the end times i mean it's not as if you'll go into your brick and mortar church and uh you know for instance uh you, Joel Olstein's not going to talk about, you know, the end times. I mean, uh, the mega churches aren't speaking about it. Even the uh, the majority of the small churches that you have in towns across America won't talk about the end times. Why do you think that is, Sheila? I think people are afraid. I think that they've been bogged down so much with theology, and I have found that even among people that I'm close to and churches that I've been to, um, I think it's getting more and more obvious that something is coming, uh, but people don't want to hear it, and I think pastors are afraid to address it because they don't want people to leave their church, and, and it's something that... Um, Especially if someone's not really right with God, it's a terrifying thing to to consider that what happened in the Bible is going to be happening in the book of Revelation. You know, people are terrified. And, you know, I've, I'm reading every time I read it, I think, oh, God, come quickly. Jesus, come quickly. But we have a lot to do. And I think the harvest is going to depend on whether or not the church starts doing real spiritual warfare. And I, I have, there's a group of um, churches up here in the Northeast near Plymouth, the hometown of the United States, 
um, where there are a lot of pastors gathering monthly and praying for revival. And this has been going on for several years. And, and my heart is, we've got to stop pulling down these strongholds. We know what they are. You know, the Bible's clear on who we're dealing with, and if we don't address these entities, they're not going to do anything. And just asking God to do it, he's, he's telling us, I've given you, I've given you the tools, I've given you the armor, I've given you the authority and the power. If you don't do it, it's not going to get done. And so I think that's why pastors just don't want to go there, because people will leave and then they won't get the tithes, and you know, you know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I know. It's just, it's interesting. They are not willing to talk about it, folks. But we are at here, the Watchman. So yes, now, let me let me ask you this: Put yourself in the position of someone who's just hearing this stuff for the first time and just hearing he about here, the Watchman. If they asked you. Uh, if they said to you, I'm thinking about going to a Hear the Watchman conference in California, why would I want to go? What would you answer? I would tell them that this is a very different conference than many, many, even of your other Hear the Watchman conferences, in that you have um, people that will be speaking on topics of the New Age. Steve Bancroft, is that how Bancars. you pronounce his name? Stephen Bancroft. Ban Yes, um, and I know that what God has been doing on a one-to-one -one basis through my counseling and my ministry, that he is going to set some people free. And those people who line up at conference after conference and they don't see any victory, God has gifted me in an unusual way that I minister to pastors, I minister to chaplains, I minister to the lowest of the brethren, I minister to people on the plane that are sitting next to me. One woman, her ear was healed when I was coming back from a conference a couple of weeks ago. And another woman who was frantic because her daughter had died in childbirth the night before, they revived her, but she was terrified as she was traveling emergency to get to her and God just he just moves in and I, I my heart is just to minister and God he takes what little we have and he multiplies it and I do believe at this conference in Southern California there is going to be a breakthrough for the church and for the people who are determined determined conference after conference that they are finally going to get set free or God's going to do something really significant in their life and in their walk. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, Sheila, we're going to, we're going to let you go. Jeannie and I are going to get back to uh, packing stuff up and, and getting everything ready. And I understand I, I, I'm not positive, but I'm getting a note handed to me here. Uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, no, I did want to say this. Okay, so listen, folks, so many of you are, you know, you guys are stuck in your faith and struggling against the, uh, the Babylonian world system. Sheila's going to lead you. She's going to, like, pick you up and take you through a breakthrough, and you can be set free. And that is something about uh, Hear the Watchman and the conferences at here the watchman is that you do get set free there's life-changing moments that happen and i'm not just saying that because we do the conference it happens we see it so anyway that's got, that's going to wrap it up i think sheila i heard a rumor that you <laughs> were going out and celebrating your 30th birthday with your family tonight so we're gonna we're gonna let you go so you guys can have a great time but thank you for thank you thank for, you Thank you for joining us today. And we will see uh, you on, uh, I guess it's next Thursday. Thursday, yes, yes. And I just want to leave it with the people who are debating whether or not they want to come. We have to get into spiritual warfare. And what deliverance does, what getting strongholds broken down does, is put you on a level ground to get into the fight. And it's really up to the person themselves whether or not there, it's time for them to get going. And I believe, as you do, that time is short. And we are going to be held accountable for what we've done 
and what we fail to do and what God's called us to do. And he's not joking. He's not a uh, he's not just an errand boy for us. We need to understand that. So I thank you and Jeannie. I know how much trouble and how much warfare you go through for every single one of these conferences. And my prayers are with you, brother. Well, thank you, sister. Thank you. And God bless you. Have a wonderful evening with your family tonight. Listen, folks, go to hearthewatchmenmen.com. Do it today. Sign up. You can go through live streaming. You can buy, pre-order the DVD set. And I also want to let everybody know, we just placed a very limited order for more of our intensive spiritual warfare workshop DVD sets. We ran out last time, and a lot of you have asked, how do I get them? Go to the website now. You can get them. So listen, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the Watchman's Report. Remember, there's absolutely nothing you can't do with Jesus in your heart, except nothing at all. Get out there, get busy, activate your faith. God bless each and every one of you. We'll see you next time here at the Watchman's Report.